Hello dear students, uh, this is Dr. D. Angel from the Department of Mathematics working as an Assistant Professor, School of Science and Humanities, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. So this lecture will be about introduction to graphs and networks which is included in your discrete mathematics syllabus. So today we will talk about the motivation behind uh, graph theory, why to study graphs and why to study about networks, what is the motivation behind that. And then what is the definition of a graph, different types of graphs and networks, and then how mathematically we can represent them as a graph and a network and some of the applications of graphs and networks. So to begin with, everywhere when we see, uh, wherever we see, every day we are surrounded by only networks and connections. For example, graphs or networks can be used to visualize these connections, which is uh, all sorts of systems in the real world can be represented as a graph. For example, the World Wide Web in the internet is a huge network where each of the web page are denoted as nodes and whenever two uh, web pages are connected, we can have a link between them. These are some of the various examples of uh, where the graphs are applied. So the internet is a network where uh, we can see uh, computers connected as nodes and if two computers are connected, we can have a edge between them, where, whereas the computers denotes the computers or other devices can be nodes. Another example is social networks between friends and families, where uh, the vertices in the network denotes people. And if two people are uh, friends or if they follow each other, they can be uh, represented by an edge. Another example is in electronic circuits can also be thought of as a graph or a network. So here is the definition of a graph where uh, you can see a diagram where these blue dots there, they are uh, denoted as nodes or vertices and the green lines or the links which are connecting these blue dots are called the edges. So basically it's just a picture or a diagram which contains points and lines. And what is the connection between a graph and a network? A network can be thought of as a graph where you connect certain objects, the objects are nodes and the uh, connections are denoted as edges. So we can use graphs and networks interchangeably. So let's take the same example, how to represent that as mathematically in the form of uh, an equation. Okay? So G is a graph which is an ordered pair of uh, sets V and E, where each of the set here V denotes the points. So the blue vertices or the blue points here denotes the vertex set V and E which connects the blue vertices or the nodes are called the edges that is denoted by E of G. So in mathematics networks are often referred to as graphs and the area of mathematics which studies these graphs is called graph theory. So let's talk about some different types of graphs. So the previous example we have seen it's in the undirected graph where the edges have uh, no direction specified whereas if we consider this example we have a directed network or it is also called a digraph. So a digraph is basically it's again a, I mean it's a graph with vertices and edges but the only thing is the edges are directed. For example the world wide web the links between the pages are directed. There is only one way you can go uh, from one uh, vertex to the other page. Complete graph. Complete graph is a graph which connects each of the vertex in the graph by exactly one edge. For example, if I have one vertex that is denoted by K1, there is no edges. It is also called a null graph. A graph which does not contain any edges is called a null graph. K2 is actually a graph on two vertices. It's a complete graph on two vertices which is connected by one edge. K3 is a complete graph on three vertices and you can see that all the three vertices are connected to each other by an edge. Similarly, K4. Now what does that do with the network? That is an example. So if you think about the vertices here as computers and each of the computers are connected to every other computer with an edge or it has a link, then you, you call it as a complete network or a complete, complete graph. So here there are six different computers or six different vertices which is uh, denoted by K6. So K6 is an example for a complete graph. Another example or type of graph is called a subgraph. So uh, in case if we have, uh, if we want to create a new graph from the existing graph, 
by just deleting some of the vertices or edges, then that becomes a subgraph of the original graph. So the definition is this, for a graph G, H is said to be a subgraph of the graph G. When you form a new graph, whose vertex is at is the vertex set of the graph G and edge set is the edge set or uh, edge subset of the edge set of G. So we have some examples here. Suppose if the G is the original graph here with three vertices, U, V, W, you can construct different types of subgraphs where one of the subgraph is H1 where uh, just deleting this U, W, H results in another graph which is the subgraph of the graph G. Another subgraph is H2 where if I delete two different edges, say for example U, V and V, W is deleted in the U, G graph, in the original graph, then we get another graph. So subgraphs are basically parts of the original graph. The next example is cycle graph. Cycle graph, we have an example here. If we have three vertices and if you want to construct a cycle graph after that, just you have to connect all the uh, vertices with a loop, in a single loop. So this is an example for a cycle graph on three vertices, which we uh, write it as C3. And if you have four vertices, uh, then you have a square. So that's a cycle graph on four vertices denoted by C4. So in general, Cn is a cycle graph on n vertices. And we can note that every cycle graph will have the same number of edges and same number of vertices. So if C3, in C3 we have three vertices, three edges, C4, four vertices and four edges, similarly for any Cn. And in a cycle graph, if we add a certain vertex to the cycle graph Cn, connecting all other vertices to that additional vertex, then we get a wheel graph which is Wn. Right? So here we have uh, the cycle C3 and an additional vertex is introduced in the middle and all other three vertices are connected to the middle vertex. So this is a wheel graph on three vertices. Similarly, a wheel graph on four vertices is constructed by introducing a vertex in the middle and then joining all the four other vertices to the middle vertex, which results in W4. Biparted graph. So biparted graph, as the name denotes, we partition the vertex set of the graph V into two different sets. Say, for example, V1 is one set, V2 is another set. Both V1 and V2 are subsets of V. Such a way that no Every edge in the graph connects a vertex in the same set. So for example, so the vertex set V of G is partitioned as V1 and V2, two different sets. And V1 contains three vertices here. V2 contains another three vertices, V4, V5, V6. So the totally six vertices are there in the graph G. But these six vertices are partitioned into three, three uh, vertices for V1 and V2. And you can see that the vertices in V1 are no longer connected with themselves. There is no adjacency between the vertices in V1 itself or V2 itself. Complete biparted graph, we denote that by Kmn. It is again a biparted graph where you uh, partition the entire uh, graph into two vertex sets and then take each vertex from one particular set, the other vertex is connected to another set. For example, if you take K23, two, two vertices are there in the V1 set, three vertices are there in the V3 set. And every vertex in V1 is connected to V2. Similarly, every vertex in V2 is also connected to V1. So K33 is an example for a complete biparted graph of three vertices in V1 and three vertices in V3. Now, how do we represent uh, graphs uh, using matrices? That is the next thing which we are going to see. So if we have an undirected graph G and if it has n number of vertices, say for example V1, V2, V3, etc. up to Vn and if there are m different edges E1, E2, etc. up to Em, then the incident matrix is actually an n by m matrix which is defined like this. We construct the matrix by putting 1s and zeros. 1 in the case whenever an edge is incident with the vertex and if it is not incident, we put 0. For example, we will take a simple example of the graph here which has three vertices u, v, w and there are three edges e1, e2, e3 as denoted here and if we want to construct an incidence matrix or incidence list for this particular graph, we draw the uh, matrix. So obviously there are three vertices and three edges so it will be a 3 by, m, 3, by 3 matrix where uh, we denote all the vertices uh, along uh, the first column and then E1, E2, E3, all the edges row wise. 
So, whenever v, look at the vertex v, okay, there are three vertices, v, u, w. For example, if we consider v, v is incident, I mean E1, uh, v is, has two vertices or two edges incident on it, E1 and E3 are two edges which are incident on v. So, in when, e, when we draw the adjacent matrix, uh, we put 1 and 1 for E1 and E3, whereas there is no connection from, I um, mean E2 is not incident on v, v so we put 0. Similarly, when we consider u, u on the vertex u, E1 and E2 are incident, so we put 1, 1 on E1 and E2 in the second row and E3 is not incident on u, so we put 0. Similarly, for w, only E2 and E3 are incident on W. So, when we write the matrix, we put 1 and 1 for the last two columns and 0 because E1 is not incident on W. So, this is how we construct the incidence map. How to construct an adjacency map? So, adjacency matrix is drawn uh, with vertices with a vertex set. For example, if two vertices are adjacent or if two vertices are connected by an edge, we put 1 or if there is no edge between two vertices, we put 0. For example, take the same example as we did for the incidence matrix, we consider the same example u, v, w, three vertices. Now, how do we draw uh, or plot the adjacency matrix? So, it is an m by m matrix, which uh, uh, we put all the vertices and the vertices along the row and the column. And then, v is not connected to v itself. Whenever there is a loop, we put 1. So, in, in this case, it is a simple graph, there is no loops or multigraphs in, involved. So, V to V is 0, U to U is 0, v, W to W is 0. All the diagonal elements are 0 in case of the adjacency matrix. Whereas, when we uh, draw, when we plot the adjacency matrix for the first row, U is connected to V and again V is connected to W. So, in, V is connected to two different vertices, degree of the vertex is 2, u and w. So, along the column u and w we put 1. Similarly, if we consider u, u is incident on v and w, so for v and w we put 1. Similarly, for w, w is incident on v and w, so again we put 1, 1 along the column and 0 for w. So, how do we apply graphs or networks in our daily life? So, I have a few examples here. So, in the internet, we see the uh, web pages which are connected by hyperlinks. So, each of the web page can be thought of as a vertex, whereas each hyperlink coming out from that web page can be uh, considered as an edge. So, what does that have to do with our daily life? So, some websites like Wikipedia or Facebook have lots of incoming link. So, depending on the incoming link, the uh, page rank algorithm is designed which uh, uses, which the Google search engines are using it. So, idea which is from graph theory is applied in the page rank algorithm and that makes this uh, Google search engines better than other search engines. The second example is uh, graphs play an important role in transportation and navigation also. So, uh, we always wanted to uh, reach the destination very quickly and in the shortest route. And so, finding the shortest route or uh, between the rail networks or road networks for everything, uh, all those things works out using graph theory concepts. So, uh, there are many other examples as well, which uh, I have listed only very few here. Maybe in the next lecture, we will uh, talk about more applications and also we will do some operations on graphs. Thank you.